You are listening to DC On Screen. By the way, mm-hmm. um, I couldn't conceivably find a way to fit this in mm-hmm. within the episode, so I'll just tell you now. I'm scared. Was all, Let's do it. I want it documented somewhere. Fair enough. Um, Terrified right now. <laughs> Last night. Even uh, more terrified. I, my wife and I were driving, and I made some kind of weird noise with my mouth, you know? And Bethany goes, what are you, choking on a dick over there? <laughs> I said, no, it's a chicken bone. It wasn't a chicken bone. And she was like, well, what's a chicken bone doing in that dick? <laughs> <laughs> um, tell her she can have my dad card for the night on that one. <laughs> I'm allowed to loan it out. Oh, God. <laughs> what's that chicken As bone? As an honorary measure on occasions. I feel like that's oh, warranted. God. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not sure she wants that dad card. No, <laughs> I think she'll take a Norm Macdonald card, but not a dad card. It's, I mean, they, it, it's got his face on it because he looks like a fucking dad. If I've ever seen the look of a dad, well, he is a dad, mm-hmm. so. or was a dad. Yeah. Oh man, DC on screen. David C. Robertson here with Jason Goss. Howdy. And uh, we're going to get into Batman Caped Crusader on Amazon Prime. Season one is Mm -hmm. done. It's out. It's on Amazon Prime. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because we're going to spoil the hell out of it right now. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Um, And and what we'll call the traditional format in streaming because things have changed enough for there to be a traditional format mm -hmm. where you drop everything at once. Yeah. So yeah, they uh they they have season one out, uh, and we're waiting on season two. They are making season two. It's probable that there will be a season three because this was very popular uh, all over the internet. Everyone who's seen it has talked about how great this thing is. I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm in it's the not same the spot. second coming. Yeah, I'm in the same spot. There's some stuff that was a little uh, I don't say a little boring a couple times for me, but I did really enjoy it. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was uh, for the most part a very fresh, fun, uh, interesting take. You know, I'll, uh, again, I don't think it's the second coming of BTAS. I just don't like. I, you know, I, I was watching it with my wife, and and she said, you know, I mean, I like it. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I like it quite a bit. And I'm like, then you will. You should love Batman the Animated Series because to me. They still just haven't gotten back to how damn good that was. Like, Cape Crusader was better than BTS in its worst episodes, for sure. Because, you know, they're honed. They've got the, the budget and whatnot. But at its best, I don't think anything touches BTAS. At its uh, best, I don't know if it can. I, I think this is the easily the closest it's gotten in a long time, though. I understand the lineage, but, I mean, for sure I understand the lineage. Well, both in actual production of course but it it is as close as it's seemed I, I don't know it's as close as i've felt to the show for a long time yeah but you know at the same time i i recognize that i'm not going to ever get back to that because i grew up with that and sure. that was the thing that i loved yeah no we won't beat the nostalgia part of it but i've mm. also always been pretty good about loving a thing and then finding a new version of it and going oh this just beats the shit out of that yeah so you know uh, you know, case in point, uh, I saw the 89 Batman movie and said, I love the shit out of that. And then Batman the Animated Series came out and I went, oh, well, that's so much better. 89 be damned. <laughs> um, but anyway. I mean, yeah, it works out for you, though. You have to fill the gap. You you have a an occasion, on occasion as a viewer, have the habit of like souring on something over time. Yeah. So I, I but I guess that with that being something that you can, uh, that, well, that you can do. Some other people don't do that in any capacity whatsoever. It just depends on, you know, how things, uh, you know, digest with people over time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like it's kind of good for you though, that you can do that because then you can enjoy new things and not feel so cheated that, you know, the, the childhood's being taken away or something. Yeah. I'll say this. I kind of feel like for the most part, the first episode in Treacherous Waters should have maybe been <clears throat> much closer to the end, maybe even the last episode. Mm. Because like, and, you know, I saw a lot of people complaining about the female penguin. I had I had not a damn problem with that. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, just killing her kids, dude. Just like, that's, that's the penguin, dude. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. And Mini Driver killed it. Um, it. It's fun because Treacherous Waters feels 
in some ways, it reminds me of the first, well, or one of the first, um, I'm not sure if it was the first, it might have just been the one that I saw first, the uh, the Fleischer Superman cartoon where the, the mad scientist is, is uh, shooting lasers mm-hmm. and blowing up parts of Metropolis uh, because the penguin is exploding shit in Gotham. Sure. And... <laughs> Batman's, you know, caught in between all these damn crime bosses. It sets up a certain amount of things. But the problem with the intratrous waters for me, though, was they destroy the police station. Oh, you think and, that should be a finale kind of situation? Well, yeah, because in the next episode, the police station is back and they never address it again. Well, see, builders and, moved in. Has there Have there been that many months? With that Wayne money. That's my question is like, how many months has happened between intratrous waters and be a villain? not likely enough time to rebuild a uh, police station, but I mean, I didn't see the, the building didn't fall, but I mean, the explosion was throughout the, that the the building inside should be fucked. Well, you know, the Reddit, the Reddit version of that's going to be like, well, I didn't see the shoe come off of the building. So the building's still alive. Yeah. And to like blow up a building like that and the police headquarters, it kind of feels like "Mm, I need a little bit more on that. Yeah. But um, not, not trying to be that part. Yeah, I, it wouldn't have worked at all for the Barbara Gordon part of this little, uh, and that's maybe the most serialized part of the whole season. In a lot of ways, is kind of Barbara in a way doing like some background, um, like a background subplot that's there the whole time, kind of thing. But you could have just started that with a different episode and swapped where that was for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and Barbara and, did, and kept yeah. your building intact if you wanted to. Well, you know, you said Barbara's the most serialized, but I kind of think Gordon is too. Gordon's pretty damn serialized. The whole Thorn thing is pretty serialized as well as Dent. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, that, Dent would definitely win the overall award. You're right. Well, by the way, um, the great performance is all around genuinely, like, like mm-hmm. you've already mentioned. But um, it took me a minute. It, I forgot who was playing what when I actually sat down to watch this and um, took a second to recognize Bader. Um, yeah, Diedrich Bader playing Harvey Dent. Yeah. He makes his voice so small. Like it, I really genuinely think he just grabbed his nose to do the recording for a lot of these. Hmm. It, it's so it's so much higher in his head. It feels like somehow um, than what I remember from like Brave and the Bold. And I know he was kind of dropping his tone a little bit, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> still, yeah, it clearly had um, some fun range. But it was a lot of fun to see him do. I don't know, such a fucking angry, violent piece of shit in this one sometimes versus what I've seen out of him in Brave and the Bold. Yeah. But even though he, even as he's like really angry as Dent, like I did, I did really enjoy like the twists on the characters in this, in this iteration. Mm-hmm. Like it is like, he is a sleaze ball until he becomes two faced. And then he's like, suddenly like, oh, nah, bitch, this is when the, the vigilante is going to come out. Yeah. It, and I was rooting for him. <laughs> I didn't think about it much, but they did. They kind of made it a point that he is a very much a mixture of morality as a uh, as a normal person, and then these last couple episodes, um, like the his full faced version of Harvey, he's yeah he's a uh, little good, a little bad, and then yeah they split him as soon as he gets the acid in the face, he seems to split into those two. And yeah, you're right, he he does way he's much much more of a like um, I don't know kind, humble, sympathetic kind of person when he's actually just being like good Harvey then mm-hmm. versus yeah clearly going the other way with the piece of shittery yeah. Like he's not like the the violent part of him is a is a total badass vigilante. That's the thing. Like yeah. Instead of a being a, a criminal, and I enjoyed that. I did. Or not really a criminal because they're all criminals if they're vigilante, but a bad guy. It was a good job with him. It's um one of my only real qualms with the series is not a real qualm even. It's just that Two Face is one of the characters I don't care about as much. Mm-hmm. So I kind of and it seems to be a. You know, Tim and these kind of people preference in some way that they're going to get back to the Two Face story one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And there are there are a lot of stories in BTAS that are kind of retold here in basically the same manner. I mean, obviously some ones that are very, very, very much told differently. But you know, Catwoman, um, I felt like it's basically the same vibe I'm used to from every other animated Batman product. You know, hey, they they're, they definitely want a pound, but we're not gonna. Yeah, what's interesting to me about that is about Catwoman. And I, I fully understand we've skipped Clayface here, and and that was a fine story, but I, I don't have a lot to say about it. It was I, I like the old style, like I love the old style uh, design, 
But, you know, I did. It's fine. The most standout part was that was when I decided to trust the show in the Clayface episode. Was mm-hmm. for a second, if, if, if I, for a second, of, I was thinking they were going to do that thing where Clayface was like, oh, he just puts on literal different masks rather than, mm-hmm. and, and that was going to bore the evolving hell out of me. Like I was, yeah. I was going to lose a little piece of myself for, for a second, but they didn't. And I was very happy. Yeah. But, you know, the thing with, um, with Tim and whoever he's uh, conspiring with, it usually seems like they like to go after Catwoman. You know, Selena Kyle was the daughter of a multimillionaire and she's a bit, you know, of a spoiled thrill seeking type. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's such a contrast to the Frank Miller prostitute, <laughs> Selena. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah that that one's gone down some different roads. Yeah, it's interesting. This one, the the biggest tweak on this one that was new, because yeah, the entitled rich girl stealing stuff part, we've seen that a little bit before. I mean, mm-hmm. hell, even in '66, I think that was part of the theme a little bit, wasn't it? Uh, you know, I don't one even cats, remember now. One of those kitties. Um, yeah, it's been a while for me too. But that was a bit of a different take. Does that like she's doing it almost, almost as an addiction that she like is ruining her life in a way? Yeah. Like, no, she's not actually just that damn good at it. She just can't stop doing it. Seems like they always play it up as she's almost just so gracefully amazing at it that she can Mm -hmm. do it anyway with just no consequences and flip sides as far as her, uh, you know, morality goes. Yeah. I, you know, black or white hat, whenever. It's fun either way. Uh, The, the, uh, the dilettante Selena Kyle Mm -hmm. is fun because she's sort of a mirror of Bruce. True. Or she's, you know, Rich, but she's kind of a oh, thrill seeker. Nothing really ever, nothing bad ever really happened to her. She's just like, she just has like this weird, you know, possibly psychosexual need <laughs> to dress up like a kitty cat and steal shit. And, yeah. uh, and it may have been, it may have been inspired by Batman. No, there's some big hulking beast of a man running around in tights. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, just to put a, <clears throat> just to pull that moment out and go ahead and put a pin in it just for everyone. Yeah, this is a very thirsty universe. We knew that was going to be the case. It's Bruce Tim. Dude, I was actually shocked that he's been he was so restrained. I think he was restrained is my my working theory because I could sense how thirsty it was behind I think uh, sometimes a very thin veil of being held back. But I did appreciate that it was it was pretty well reined in, yeah. I'm surprised it was it was it wasn't behind a thin Vicky veil. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> no, I, yeah, uh, the thin veil. No, was not just the stripper outfit before. Right, the beat drops. Man, I was like, because it was Bruce Tim. So, like I said, I think in the last episode, you know, uh, Harley asks Montoya out, and I was like, okay, well, we gonna see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, they were, you know, they had a couple of curse words, a couple of things that we, they couldn't have done in BTAS. But you know what? Like, it was pretty damn bloodless. It was pretty sexless. It was. It was. I was shocked. I kind of like, and that was maybe part of one of my issues with it, because it was like they were doing like more cursing. They were kind of going for more of a gritty, uh, like, gangsta feel. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they were like restrained I mean, in a weird way. You're starting in with a thorn or a penguin, you know. It, yeah, we know but, what part you know, of the Gotham we're playing in. I didn't expect it to go like full on Deadpool, Wolverine, or or you know, I don't know, some sleazy noir porn name. I don't know. No, yeah, I don't want. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a name off 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 hand for that. Uh, but I didn't expect it to go R rated. But I thought it would probably be pretty heavy uh pg-13 yeah and to me they didn't i think they may have hit pg and i was a little shocked that it didn't go further i don't know i I, especially since like tim would get in trouble on btas for like implying prostitution and stuff you know like there are things that i thought that they would places i thought they would go now that they had the ability yeah that's a good point it was streaming so it didn't properly get a rating right Right. So we're just applying this after the fact. I don't know. I, I guess a like a very, oh, you just barely made it over the hump PG-13 would make sense to me because of mm-hmm. a lot of the themes involved. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is, they they do, they do a, f- a fair amount of, um, you know, there's there's not uh, displayed violence. It's all a lot of implied or fantasy violence, whatever you want to call the phrasing. Yeah. 
But I mean, yeah, you're right. It's not extremely graphic as a show goes. Like this is not fucking Harley Quinn or even Kite Man. Yeah, that's um, a good call. Like, yeah, I, I would have expected closer to Harley Quinn, which is funny because they will curse up and down. Maybe all Tim day got long. it out of his system watching that show. They curse all the time on Harley Quinn, but they won't show nudity. That's that's weird. They so, show brains being busted in, but they black out a tit. That's just weird. Yeah, to me. Or um, <laughs> are you caught up on Kite Man? No, no, I need to uh, go back. And you do. It is that. delightful. I've got to. Um, I've got to watch the finale. I kind of have been saving that as a treat. Um, I, I've enjoyed the three or four episodes I've seen. It it is fun, but yeah, they they hilariously um, like you've never seen. I think half of the season Golden Glider's been nude, but like they've they've always just got blood like over her or something or Mm -hmm. on the occasion where they can't they will blur literally blur the animation which always makes me fucking laugh (laughs) like you chose this you chose this staging somebody drew this on purpose Mm -hmm. the the blurring is always a good joke for me but yeah it's 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 very nude and very dirty in a lot of ways um yeah maybe you did just get it out of a system or it wasn't necessary here it certainly wouldn't have helped the story to just go overboard it would i would have had the same problem there with, with like the killing joke why we we didn't sure. add anything to that movie with that right right yeah now i'm not complaining or uh championing the fact that they didn't go further i was just shocked that they didn't yeah it exists in the form it should thank you i mean i could have dealt with a little more a little more a little more darkness a little more violence a little more uh you know, just seediness overall, but you know, I didn't need it to be porn or anything. There's time. And there are parts of this that are genuinely haunting. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you've already gone over, like killed her son. I mean, the damn fucking, when she killed a son, she killed him in front of the other one. Damn. And like, not even like a quick merciful one. This was a slow, painful death. Yeah. Or slow enough. Um, And And I knew like, man, flash and bullet taking down firebug. Uh, yeah, Firebug, pretty rough too. But uh, to bring up Firebug specifically, that's what I was going to go for next is, man, the scene where he's like, he's imagining the families, but then he imagines them in flames as little flame children. Yeah, yeah. That would frighten my five-year-old, I think, way more because it's like just slightly abstract enough for a young enough kid to really kind of get that on a guttural weird, that weird level where you perceive and remember things that you don't even know why you remember them that way. Mm-hmm. That's one of those where like, oh, that could be a core memory. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to unlock that one. Let's not do that. But yeah, that was, oof. yeah, that was a choice. They set him out intending him to do what he did and then kill him for it. Like, yep. uh, that's messed up. He never had a chance. I'm like, Oh good. No redemption for Bullock in this universe. No, okay. None. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no redemption for Bender here, man. Um, so one of my favorite switches was Harley Quinn. Yeah. Great one. Bubbly. Happy as a psychiatrist, as uh, and then at night, torturer, brainwasher, brainwasher more specifically. Um, yeah, it didn't seem like the violence was the point for her. She wants to, well, I mean, I felt like it was psychological violence, but at the same oh, time, yeah, she, she, is. she absolutely had people like beating the shit out of each other in there. Like, if I don't know that, that one guy she has in there in the court jester outfit, she has uh, the dude in the baby diaper like walk in with a giant hammer. And he gets to have his, his sweets if he beats the fuck out of this dude. And yeah. the next time we see that guy, like, his face is all mangled up. Oh, dude. yeah, he, like, he broke. It's like misery over here. It is. Um, I just wondered, like, you know, with her, I feel like um, the violence is just incidental as all. She, she's That's probably not the part she's really enjoying. Uh, it was the control, I felt like, was the, the major thing. Yeah. I dug it. I loved that episode. It was creepy. He really, for the change-ups, as you put it, um, Yeah, I really don't think I had much. I mean, I don't think there were any notes on my side, genuinely. Like, I I was perfectly happy to see all of these as new takes. We, we already played. Well, he is. He's playing in a familiar feeling universe. I'm happy to see this thing turned on its head a, a good bit. In fact, I'm rooting mm-hmm. for it. I don't <clears> want to <throat> just watch it again. We've done that. Yeah. And I, I really liked a lot. Of, I mean... I'm really looking through the names here and not finding a flaw. I, yeah. I don't think I had and some it, like, oh my God, I can't believe they did it to his character. I enjoyed all these takes. It's, it's unfortunate because like, you know, we're 39 and 40. And at this point in our lives, we have two ways we can go. We no, no, can, we're 40 and 40 now. You're 40, right? Oh, I'm 40. Yeah, we're 40. You're 40? Yeah. I thought you were a year younger than me. No, not anymore. I'm apparently less than a year younger than me. 
Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. But I'm. I'll take the year back, but it won't actually help my physical health, so I don't really care. <laughs> right. Right. I'm about to turn forty-one, so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I forgot what time of the year it is. Mm-hmm. So that the thing time. about it is, like, it, at our age, and you see this all the time on social media when you talk to people about these things. You see this. People get mad and say, "Well, they're not doing it like it's supposed to be done." And for me, I'm like, I want to see it done the way I've never seen it done because I know these stories. Yeah, I'm. I, I you know, I don't want to be a dick about it, but I'm tired of these stories. I want to see something new. So when you when we get something like this, you know, whether or not we love it 100 percent or not, like I am always like really happy to see the weird new versions of these characters. Like, you know, I think there's like a switch to some degree, like like I was complaining about, you know, Joker last week where Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, just don't call him the character. There's a point where like it's so unrecognizable that it's like there's no point. But if you're you get to a similar place and the character is still re- somewhat recognizable, but it's a new take, that's fun. You know what I mean? Like I just I, I recognize that it, I could be perceived as being a hypocrite for what I'm saying right now. Like based on last week, where I was just like, "Don't do the character if you're not going to do the character." Well, <laughs> the th- the point is they were like you know with what Todd Phillips is doing in a lot of cases or in several different people are doing a thing where they're like, hey, we needed a prosecutor. We'll just call him Harvey Dent. Yeah. And there's nothing else there except for the fact that he's a lawyer and he's, his name is Harvey Dent. Like, there, there's nothing of Harvey Dent there. I think uh, where I left it was kind of this middle ground where, like, that's fine with me. Like, what, what are you going to not name him that? I'm good with just the, the placekeeper name. Mm. But, but, you know, this there, one's a lot of these are just, we're going to, it's not even whole cloth take. It's just, we're going to, they did a good job of either like doing it. Well, I'd say that the only exception may be the, the gangsters, but like, what are you going to do with They're gangsters? They're all, they're stereo, they're Gotham gangster stereotypes. You don't really need yeah. to change Rupert Thorne. But you know what? Yeah. I felt like they did. I feel like they changed Rupert Thorne enough that, I, that he felt fresh to me. Maybe, maybe. I think I'd really have to rewatch it to, t- to have a real pure take on him. He, that that's such a static kind of character to me that I think it's just, generic gangster and i'm good i've got the mm-hmm. plot point i'm fine something real special has to happen for me well first of all you know I, the batman the animated series rupert thorne always felt like such a uh he felt like a sinister john candy mm. like he always had like a little angry quip and Fair he enough. looked like he looked like john candy and it was just it was it was bizarre how much that dude felt like john candy to me this guy, he's not. He doesn't feel like that at all. He's a different kind of of gangster, and I don't know. There, there was a, there was just a lot of difference to me, and I love the voice actor. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but he's on a ton of stuff. He was on Crazy Ex Girlfriend, and I've seen him all over the place. Yeah. When I I looked at about halfway through because I kind of played that game of uh, see if I can guess the voice for a second. I got a couple of them, mm-hmm. but um. I did actually IMDb this at some point. Just scrolled through and thought, well, this is just strong as shit. Yeah, you could basically like uh, you could probably spend about twenty seconds of just this episode of our show reading the names, and that alone would be stronger content than the rest of the. Oh yeah, like, Cedric Yarbrough. That's the guy that played Rupert Thorne. That dude is always like, he's funny as hell. He's got great comedic timing, but he's got this voice, this like deep, menacing voice that just oh my god. I don't know. I loved it. And I loved Rupert Thorne's stupid son. You know, we're just going to take him out, Dad. And I'm like, mm, you're an idiot. <laughs> oh. That's who that is. Yeah, the name the name was familiar. I forgot who uh, Cedric is. Yeah, he's got a great voice, though. Yeah, he's he, he's just fantastic. Always fantastic. How tall is that guy. I've always wanted to look up. 6'2". That feels about right. Thanks, yeah, front page like, of Google. What's his six, fucking social? <laughs> Jesus. I man. would have guessed six foot damn. I, he's always... He is. He's a big boy. By the way, I... uh, I don't know what Google didn't understand just then. I know we haven't gotten to her episode yet, but McKenna Grace as Nocturne. That was this uh, Egon's... I did not even realize that was who that was. uh, Egon's granddaughter from the Ghostbusters movies. Ah, okay. That one was... uh, That episode alone, I doubt I would have caught her by the voice on that one. Uh, She would have had to say something real particular, and I don't know if I would have caught it, but... That was the one episode where I was like, okay, you're going to have to catch me up. Uh, I, I do claim COVID. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's part of why my memory's shady right then, but you were going to yeah. have to catch me up on the Nocturne episode because I didn't remember much about it. So uh, the Nocturne episode. Okay, we can jump ahead for that. Um, this is an episode that uh, they wanted to do in some regard during the Batman the Animated Series, and the censors wouldn't let them do it, essentially. And it's a you know a young girl who's a vampire of sorts, uh, basically dra- draining uh, kids' life energy. And, uh, you know, it wasn't one of my favorite episodes, honestly. It was not. I didn't like, I thought it was great that she accidentally killed her brother. I, I love that Batman was the one that had to like break it to her. She's like, Oh, he'll just forgive me. He's like, dude, she's dead. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. You killed him. What? Oh my God. Like, I know you didn't mean to, but you did. You killed him. Um, mm. the thing that I thought was really super fun about it though, was, uh, one Leslie Tompkins yeah. uh, was running an orphanage, but did you pay attention at all to the kids in the orphanage? Not really. Why? What was there's a little red-headed boy named Jason. Oh. A little a little dark-haired boy named Dickie. A little blonde girl named Steffi. Look at them fellas. <laughs> a little red-headed girl named Carrie. Like they're all Robins. Mm. They were all Robins. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I was shocked that you didn't catch that one. Mm. I didn't. I, was, I didn't. I was like watching it. I was like, oh, Dickie. Oh, cool. That, and they even mentioned like, oh, is this a circus? I'm like, huh. <laughs> that kid's named Dick. <laughs> it's a circus, maybe. Like, okay. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it's a traveling carnival. That's not really a circus. Not really a Pop Haley situation. Mm-hmm. Of course, one of the freaks at the circus was uh, was Killer Croc. I don't know if you noticed that. He literally had lines and like. On the circus thing? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. beat the shit out of Bruce and threw him down. And I love the way they're like, hey, I don't know, to us, it looks like it's a, some dude running after a little kid. That don't seem right. Yeah. Beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do remember watching that scene and thinking like, God, tough fucking town. Jesus. I know. Like, you guys didn't even ask if it was his like nephew or son or like, anything. I appreciate Just, like, looking out and all, but damn. Give a man a, Jesus a quick Christ. trial. Jesus. Just beat him, left him for dead behind the tent. <laughs> <laughs> he probably would have if it wasn't Batman himself. Yeah. I, I mean, genuinely, that was one of the things I was thinking is like, as he was kind of getting up the next morning, he does like it. it this is my violence in, in uh, shows is it's important to point out what reality is like instead. Cause like he gets up from this massive beating left in a hole and just sort of grab gets up and basically just like grabs his jacket uncut or untorn mm-hmm. shirt still half tucked in. I think somehow sort of strolls off to his car. Like I'm fine. I'm like, even as he gets in the car, he's like, I'm fine. I'm like, no, you're not. You have a fucking concussion. Yeah. Like, you you should be at the hospital. <laughs> Which is In one reality, of Alfred, it, this mission would have all stopped real early in reality if Alfred actually gave a damn. It, it would it would just be the first time something like that happened. No, you're not, Master Bruce. I, I'm tired of this shit. We're going to the fucking hospital. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm really torn. I'm really torn on Bruce because, uh, honestly, like, dude, uh, Hamish Linklater, I've seen him be a really great actor in Newsroom and other things, um, uh, crazy ones or whatever. Yeah, with, I've uh, Robin Williams. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a single misstep out of that man in any capacity. Well, I have. Where this show? Oh, which one? Just his Batman voice is kind of awful. Really? No, like sometimes like it. it's sometimes it's really good, and sometimes like there's so little variance in it, like. I really do just keep flip flopping on it. Like from that first teaser, I hated it. The trailer, I loved it. And then like throughout the series, I just kept going between those two where I was just like, Oh, that's, that's really good. Oh, that was a terrible line. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, why? why ooh. like there's just some sort of like lack of sometimes he goes, he, his voice falls flat when he does the, the Batman voice. And that's the thing that's messing me up with Batman or one of the things like, there's a thing that like Bruce Tim was talking about recently where um, he was like, one thing we did in the Batman animated series that we don't do here. Uh, I feel like that is a, it's a positive. And uh, you know, years ago we stopped doing it on Batman the animated series was we stopped doing close-ups of Batman um, because God, well, now I've lost the name um, famous artist who designed space ghost. No, oh, fuck. I don't know. <laughs> and a lot of those, uh, a lot of those characters, animation legend, um, 
Hanna Barbera came up to him and told him stop doing close. Is Hanna Barbera a real person? Because no, that's, that's all I can think of. Well, maybe I don't know, but um, for some reason I'm just come Alex Toth. That's who I'm thinking of. Like Alex Toth, uh, you know, legend in animation, legend in design. Told Bruce Tim, I'm digging Batman the animated series. Stop showing close ups of Batman. It's terrible. And I don't, I don't know what the reason for it was, but I loved the close ups in Batman the animated series. Like the deeply painted close ups where all you see is him squinting his eyes or some shit. Like that was cool. But Bruce Tim took that shit to heart. Now, like one of the one of the issues that I feel is prevalent here that I that I don't enjoy is like how absolutely mundane Batman looks sometimes. Like they don't like really take a lot of, they don't take a lot of care to make him look as um, terrifying as he should. Like it just very much looks like he is a dude in, in tights and that's fine. It's the golden age, but all, you know, I kind of want it to be a little grittier. I kind of want it to be a little more frightening for the thugs. Yeah. You know, like if he's alone and we are just watching Batman be Batman, I'm more okay with him just kind of looking more normal, I guess. And this is all just bullshit from me. This is all just like, hey, here's Dave. (laughs) This is what he would have done with it. It's not even a real problem. It's just like things that I would have done differently. Like, you know, Batman the animated series, even when we d- just did see him without people looking at him, mm. he was like cloaked behind, like the whole cape was around him. You would just see like one black hand coming out, holding a flashlight, going through files in the in the commissioner's office or whatever. You know, like, yeah, there's a little more style to him. And for what it's worth, like you could say like, yeah, they're trying to go for more of a golden age feeling. But I felt like BTAS already kind of did that and they should have picked up a little more from what they were doing then. Just in a few instances, like change the characters, that's fine. Like do a new twist on them, but certain elements, man, just uh, kind of, kind of hold those close. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, the voice, uh, as far as his voice goes, <clears throat> my real quick take was I don't mm-hmm. think I thought about his voice the entire time. Yeah, which means that for me, obviously, it was just fine. Yeah, sure. Um. I don't, I do, I, that is a good point. I don't remember it really standing out. I was like, oh man, this is one of the great takes on Batman's voice. Um, neither do I remember at any point having a, a moment of balk. So, um, his Bruce Wayne was great. Yeah, that is probably also true. But, um, there's a scene in there where he goes from being Bruce to Batman. Oh, I would like to actually focus on that one if I could go back and pay attention specifically to. Yeah, he's, a, he's Bruce at the time. Yeah. But he's like having a conversation and then somebody pisses him off and he says something. <laughs> I can't Batman remember who it was. Out. If it, I think it was Dent. It was like blah da 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 da, and then like Dent is saying some shit, and he's like blah da da Harvey. Like oh my god, <laughs> like he like it, and it was fun because I was uh, I believe that was um, that one was um, uh, the killer inside me, mm. and um, my wife and I were talking about like how it was fun because like both Dent and Batman were kind of like two people with multiple personality who were kind of switching up on each other. It's like four people having a conversation. Nice. <laughs> anyway, um, I, as far as his actual design, um, you know, the costume, I get it. I, I definitely get it. I think I liked that. Um, you know, the BTAS kind of showing less, um, a little more mystery under the whole mechanism kind of mm-hmm. thing. But that being said, I don't know. I get it. If they're saying they were going back to, you know, uh, 66 or even hell, the serials to some extent, as far as mm-hmm. it being, that just looks like a dude with some cloth draped on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what this cartoon looked like. Dude with some cloth. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Now it's never been my favorite version. Cause I, I, I do, I do love me an armored Batman. I, I love all the, all the techs. I love all the gadgets. I love all the fucking poly, whatever goddamn nano cloak he's got got on. I, <laughs> these are the things I, <laughs> some of the things I treasure about the character. <laughs> <laughs> I, f- I felt like Hunter S. Thompson describing what Batman wears. <laughs> Something like it. <laughs> but yes, I like um, I appreciate that side of the character more. I understand the history and, and certainly understand the stripped down. Like, well, you know, if it was just a guy with an outfit. Very yeah. much, though, this, this show's uh, version is a guy in an outfit. A really well-built guy in an outfit. Yeah, I, and that's fine. And abs I, you know, for I, days. 
I just kind of, I just moved toward the idea of like whatever he's got under there, whether it be like a, a, a thin piece of cloth with a bat symbol on it mm-hmm. or armor, whatever he's got, you shouldn't want anybody to know what it is. Yeah. That's that cape serves a purpose. There was, just in, my weird um, thing. I think it was, yeah, yeah. It's in, um, <clears throat> in Arkham Knight, the game, there's a reference to that. Uh, cause I think it's a, that was a Frank Miller invention, right? The, um, shoot for the, you know, the, I've basically the logo stands out. Cause that's where I want you to shoot. That's what I mean. It may have come from something before Frank, but that's where I remember it from. <sighs> well, uh, I'll take your phrasing on that one then. Yeah, I agree. Um, but there's a mention of that in Arkham Knight, because if, if anyone doesn't recall at this point in the game, if you were able to play it, and by that mm-hmm. I mean uh, either afford it or get it to fucking work, um, did, there's a whole bit where uh, Jason Todd obviously is the is the sneaky, sneaky bad guy, and there's a point where he's instructing his men to go after Batman, and he does. He references like, and don't aim for the chest. That's part of that, That's a trick. Aim for the head. Mm-hmm. I just appreciate the references. All. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a well loved uh, portion of the um, of the mythos for a lot of writers, mm-hmm. and it makes sense. It, that's the only way that symbol, that big yellow symbol, makes sense. Mm-hmm. We um, we of course extended the logic to the crotch area famously some years ago, mm-hmm. much to many people's <laughs> regret. <laughs> my own, my own most specifically. Uh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, I was I was very yeah, happy. That segment to, was named Bat Wieners for quite some time. Oh yeah. Until the actual Bat Wiener appeared years later in what is now my personally most valuable comic book. Mm. That's damned, right? Yeah, a copy of Damned pre damnation. Uh but yeah, like I was what I was saying earlier is I really enjoyed Bruce's uh progression, his character arc mm-hmm. in in this uh season. Because he very much goes from cold son of a bastard Bruce who calls the man who raised him Pennyworth. Like, don't even call him Alfred. Jesus Christ, man. He did. You got your moment at the end. I was I, did. I was a little surprised they did make him that distant. The, yeah, I was shocked that they made him that distant. But um, I did enjoy the arc to some degree. Because it did... I knew what they were going for because if you go back and you read the old Golden Age comics before there's an Alfred, before there's a Dick, and it's just Batman just being a Dick before Aunt May or whatever, or whatever. Aunt May, Aunt May, May. That was a different universe what entirely. Fuck? What the fuck was her name? <laughs> Aunt Harriet. Aunt Harriet. Thank you. Not Aunt um, May. That's that's Aunt May, I believe. That's Spider Man. You talking about? Is it? Um, is it? Yeah. Though you know, Batman did have a, uh, or in, back in the old comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was said that Bruce had a an aunt and an uncle that he went and lived with. Mm. That's who raised him in the old old comics. They were quickly forgotten, but they they had whole stories that they narrated and shit. In my head, it's some forgotten characters, Uncle Raish. Oh God, that would have been fun. Um, they actually uh kind of recently revived those characters to some degree, but they made them um instead of being uh, his dad's brother and wife it was uh his it was on his mom's side so they were canes mm-hmm. yeah yeah the canes yeah, they, were, uh... but they had a the same uncle and aunt anyway i liked the uh i did i liked the, the progression of uh of bruce this season and i'm wondering like how far are we going to take the golden age thing like will dick show up again as robin will they do a thing where like all the robins are like are they training? Is he training an army at some point? Like, I want to know where they're going with this because most of it kind of very much felt serialized. Like, like you were saying, Barbara's shit, the flats and Bullock stuff, mm-hmm. Dent, uh, Gordon. Really, the only misstep for me was the police department as far as the uh, the continuity goes. I'm just going to try to give you the headcanon that it's just a very similar looking nearby precinct and they just moved yeah. operations. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, dude, I loved the gentleman ghost episode. Oh yeah. Uh, so like a whole Papa category of, of praise for me is let, let's go over. So for me, he batted a thousand as far as the changeups go. I really enjoyed the takes, but also batting a thousand. I'm pulling some unknowns out and giving him some real screen time. Yes. Uh, gentleman ghost being probably my favorite of, of the ones I'm thinking of. Um, my biggest issue with that is it put freaking adamant in my head. 
Just walking around going, stand on deliver. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'm sorry. Ding. But pulling Bow. out um, onomatopoeia, for instance, uh, yeah, is that the first screen time of onomatopoeia? No. Or onomatopoeia what? is a villain in Superman and Lois. Okay. Okay. Um, Season three, I believe. First animated screen time then, maybe? Maybe, but, you know, here was my issue with Onomatopoeia. I was a little disappointed with him. Part of his attitude, though, did have a serious frat boy vibe. Is that just me? You know, I didn't catch that, but I was distracted. Because when he's making noise sometimes, it almost felt like finger bang, like future stock 80s guy, kind of like from Futurama. Hey, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, that, okay. It just hit me that way a couple times. Yeah, he was a little less creepy than I, he was much less creepy than I wanted him to be. But the other thing was, is like, I always envisioned Onomatopoeia, and this is basically how they kind of played Onomatopoeia on Superman and Lois in a way. It was, uh, he's like just the, 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 the sound effect guy on Police Academy. Like, that when he does the things with the, with his mouth, it sounds like the thing. He's not just like some dude walking around going, bang, click, pow, you know? <laughs> Yeah. I kind of wanted to actually hear like the sound effect. But, you know, that's kind of a small, small gripe. It just, they didn't do much with him. He was just like a mob heavy. and Yeah, I mean, pretty much. But I, did, I, I don't I don't know what to expect out of that character in a way. Every, every time there's a take on it, because uh, that's a character who's kind of, even the power set, almost in a way only makes sense on the page to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing any, any version of action of it is, is like, well, what, how are you going to try to interpret this? So it, so you can actually do this with moving characters mm-hmm. with something that has to actually make sound, um, yeah. in a, in a universe that presumably has sound. Well, uh, the, 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 like the presentation of the character aside from the onomatopoeia of it all, this is the best re- iteration I've seen mm-hmm. on screen. It beats Superman and Lois, but the actual like presentation of the onomatopoeia, Superman and Lois beats the shit out of this well i am looking forward to that then superman lois is the the first of the cw shows that i'll i'm gonna that i'm actually gonna probably finish at some point oh yeah you definitely should you should man i mean it comes back in october you need to like crank it up i know myself well enough to know with how i currently feel about those shows when i do make it back to that land that does it come back in october no it's coming back soon i think so yeah all right that's uh that's confirmed uh superman and lois comes back october 17th final season I don't know if that's enough time. <laughs> yeah. But it's enough time for us to watch the finale at the same time. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. If I try to think of it as getting to the end. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna incorporate that as a light goal even. I mean. I'm going to give it a the, full of all the goals. on definitely maybe. Yeah. Like this is going to be fun. Yeah. It's a good show. Solid. Solid show. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I've enjoyed what I've seen. Uh Watching it week to week is a torment, so you're blessed. <laughs> like we'll, we'll we will we'll just like bite the bullet and hold off for a few weeks and just wait for another one. Yeah, or wait for you know some to pile up so we can just watch a bunch of them at once. I did find that um, <clears throat> skipping every other week of Kite Man is ideal for me mm. this year. Was ideal yeah, because one episode it's good, but you get to the end of about twenty five minutes. I, I could I could have done a little more. Yeah. Two episodes, you really, really filled in that sweet tooth, and mm-hmm. and you're good. And then a couple weeks later, go by, and you got that you know better part of an hour back. Ah, it, was, it was a good experience. Yeah, it's good to skip sometimes. It feels like because it's like you gotta you just let the let the tumult of life it, of everyday life sweep you away. Let that wine sit in the decanter, you know. If you love something, let it go. All that. Let the busyness of life kind of just pull you down the river. Mm-hmm. Two weeks will pass before you even know it. And you'd be like, oh, shit, I have a couple of kite man. Yeah. yeah. And you want the depression and, and all that to really ripen so that when you watch something that distracts you for, for a couple hours, two weeks later, it's it's even better. Well, when you don't have kids mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you work from home. <laughs> explain, <laughs> explain this process to me. I find you wind up. You know, just with other shows mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. occupy your time. And then you go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, so many people hate me right now. Anyway. If you stay up late enough in my life, you get to experience things like that. Mm-hmm. 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 Speaking of, I just found the um, Arkham Knights game was available where I was. Oh, um, fun. Where I was playing games for. 
for all that. But I discovered it on the uh, leaving soon list, so I'm gonna have to really power through that one if I want to do it. Mm. Um, I did. I did turn on the game long enough to watch the opening, like the intro scene, and it was yeah. good. Good. There, is it the remastered version or the original version of the game? Yeah, uh, it's, it only came out like two years ago, I think. Of the, I thought you said Arkham Asylum. What did you say? Gotham Knights. Or, uh, that's what I meant to say, at least. Oh, Gotham Knights. Yeah, the one with like all four of them. Okay. All the all, yeah, all four no. of the babies. For some reason, I thought you said bed. Arkham Asylum. I might have, but I don't trust myself. Yeah, of course it was. It's also a little bit on my heart because I'm sitting here looking at an Arkham Arkham Asylum thing. Don't blame. I'd... On my uh, on my desk here, and I've been thinking about because I know they they remastered those games. They remastered them, and they look so pretty. They are. They are good. Well, the new versions look even prettier than the original versions. Yeah, genuinely, I was just happy to get through Arkham Knight without the thing crashing on me. Mm-hmm. That's fair. It's absolutely fair. I feel like um, we glossed over Knight Ride a bit. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Um, um, I have a very specific um, spot with that, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It, it contains my favorite moment or, or not. Well, maybe just moment, but anyway, it contains my favorite plot point of the entire series so far. Which part? In so in that episode, um, and and again, you're wondering what are we going to do with this series? Because every time he brings up a new character, mm-hmm. and we're learning about the universe, and you don't know what limits we're going to put on things. Like for mm-hmm. instance, a few episodes before that, I was worried about like, oh, is Clayface just going to be like a dude with a bunch of masks, and that was going to be boring. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he, we really took some serious chances with Harley Quinn, for instance. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Including Offinger, uh, but anyway, I, I you see, Wait, did they kill her? <sighs> no, they were. I thought they, she just went away. She did. She did just went away. Well, she fell into the thing. I thought. Oh, we didn't, we didn't see a body. We didn't That's see right. A body. She did come back. Yeah, she did come back. We didn't see a body. Uh, she's not gone. By the way, do you know? Do you know? Uh, did you notice that when she, whatever place she told uh, Barbara to meet her, not Barbara uh, Montoya to meet her, she said at the corner of uh, of Wilson and and uh, Lowry. I didn't catch that joke on that one. Wilson and Lowry were the first two men to play Batman in the serials. Oh, that's good. Lewis Wilson and Rob Lowry. Well played, guess. Yeah. Well played. Like, I squealed when she said it. <laughs> My wife was like, what? And I'm like, oh, they mentioned the first two Batman. Quick man's playing. Let me hit pause. <laughs> Nerd's playing, yeah. really. Um, oh, yeah. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah. It, so, what, we're, what, six episodes in, it looks like, on that one on Night Ride? Didn't know where the show was going exactly. This was a moment of, okay, what are we going to do? really do here? Now you've got, like, a ghost character involved. This, mm-hmm. this guy just got, Is it like, going to be a Scooby-Doo? Yeah. We, we, we just got, like, a little little Siegfried and Roy going on in the bus here. What's up? What's and up? I would have gotten away with yeah. it, too, if it wasn't for those meddlesome bats. Yeah. Uh, but no, the show decided, nope, there's ghosts. And the thing I liked the most about the show at that moment was no, 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 no. We mean ghosts. And the thing I loved so much about that for the canon of this character's Batman is that in the course of that episode, he basically shows up at Papa <laughs> at uh, midnight's door and just says like, well, there's ghosts. What are we doing about it? <laughs> <laughs> like there's no hesitation. I love it so much as a choice. He just rolls right the fuck into I, it's my city. I said I'd defend it against all odds, and I guess ghosts are part of that now. So here's my ally. Like, well, he's like, well, I'm at the end of science. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Ghosts? Yeah. Is that a thing? Push-ups ain't going to help this problem. Need to look, need to expand my boundaries a little bit. And I think the show, yeah. uh, Dead Midnight even mentioned something like, oh, you know, I like guy who's wanted to like expand his, something like that. Yeah. Um, it was it was a great turn. That was when I had the most faith in in what I was watching right then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I loved it because it was like it was totally like he's telling Alfred like there's no such thing as ghosts. And literally like five minutes later in the show, like he's showing up at Papa Midnight and being like, So, so there's, there's ghosts. ghosts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you know, to to exaggerate, yeah, Midnight's like, So is that like something you're worried about? Nope, not a bit. So are, are, are we in like the consoling mode or more of a problem so- problem solving area? We're going straight to problem solving. Cool, 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 cool. I got a yeah, I got a thing for you. And then what was the cool line know. later? Uh, what's that uh, th- there was a cool line later about like the trade that he had made on that like on the hill after um alfred um fucked him off with a poem um there was no he actually got the thing to light it was that was by the way such a funny little scene it's it looks he alfred looks like a little like they modeled it after like this like kind of jokey back alley sort of crack kind of behavior a little bit like mm-hmm. 
just have him hunched over the lighter with the lighter not working kind of things. Like, man, you know, we've all been there. <laughs> I get it. There, there was a lot of uh, derision online about the fact that they chose to make Alfred a fat man, which many people believe has never been in the case. Now, I don't know if you know. <laughs> yes, I but guess. But I he's know. as much right to be a fat man as a thin man in any capacity. I can tell. What difference does it make to the storytelling on that? I don't know, but it was definitely like a, a golden age choice because the original Alfred was fat. Yeah, I guess. He was. I'm telling you he was. I'm just thinking he I was probably a, would be. My lifestyle is pretty. I mean, I'm working all day, but, but around the house. The original Alfred. Cooking a lot. The original Alfred was a big, fat, fatty fat. He was clumsy. He was very much fatty fall down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he read a lot of detective novels and try, and was like a little amateur detective himself. I'm imagining a they, living version of the Alfred Hitchcock silhouette. And then they got scared because of all the Frederick Wortham shit, and they sent his ass away to fat camp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and brought in Aunt Harriet. Because it was too gay in that house, apparently. <laughs> and then when he came back, he was skinny. Yeah. He was like gaunt. <laughs> what a shitty fucking book. <laughs> seduction of the and Innocent. He, told, he called it Seduction of the Innocent. What the fuck? Yep. How did... Just thousand percent chance there's kitty porn on that guy's hard drive if he lived today just yeah man come on if 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 there's anyone out there listening who doesn't know what i'm talking about frederick wortham uh i think the guy was like a nazi and he came over here like and he started like coming up with all this bullshit about like how the comic books were destroying young minds he wrote a book called seduction of the innocent he freaked the shit out of everyone like all the adults were upset and angry it was satanic panic but with comic books yeah i'm being and very it, serious when i say it was too gay in that house that was a that that's whole chapters of that book is yeah devoted yeah, to absolutely. that being the uh this undermining had, effect on our child this man had breakdowns of comic book panels twisted and turned so he could point out that the folds in clothing look like a lady's private parts yeah. Like it was ridiculous. Or as he probably Batman put it, George O'Keefing is. And look, it worked. It like the, basically the comic industry had to. That's why they came up with the Comics Code Authority so they could self police instead of having their entire industry shut down. Until apparently so, Stan Lee said, "But what if I don't care?" Yeah. And history was made yet again. No, this man went to Congress with this shit. I mean, it was a whole big thing, man. It mm-hmm. was it was a different era. I think that really was in the uh, McCarthy kind of era, though. Um, I want to say time was. Um, so yeah, uh, probably around the same you know news age of uh, the whole blacklisting and do you mm-hmm. have any communist ties? Area of America's wonderful, wonderful, kind and forgiving history. The present is any better? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. We're doing great. No one asks questions. We're doing fine. <laughs> uh but yeah i loved night ride i love gentleman ghost i was very i was shocked shocked that they did gentleman ghost and i love that uh, papa pleased. papa midnight was basically wearing like the uh the traditional like silver age gentleman ghost gear yeah like the the white top hat and the monocle and all the whole thing like oh my god he's just dressed like a gentleman ghost generally is but I, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed it, and it, my wife had to stop and be like, "Wait, are they doing? Are they doing Adam Ant? Is that a reference?" I'm like, "No, nah, that's a reference to High Women, mm-hmm. which was what that entire song Stand and Deliver' by Adam Ant is about. <laughs> <laughs> it's just High Women running around, Stand and Deliver. <laughs> they um, you know, they didn't really do too different from the Scooby uh, Scooby episode, except like. It was real. It, it yeah. At this time, he actually had. It, it's like the reveal you always thought was going to happen during a Scooby episode. Oh, the ghost is real this time, and then the 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 actual person that became the ghost is just far far cuntier than you ever expected in a real episode of Scooby Doo. Other than that, it's basically the same. Mm-hmm. I loved how in the episode they basically convinced they tried to convince us red herring us that this guy who was who owned the grounds that Lucius was trying to buy was gentleman ghost. Yeah. like they were like. Oh no! Like it's that guy, and then the motherfucker comes out the painting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not his. It's not his kin. It's him. Like yeah, 
I guess that was maybe the fourth wall effect for me is the whole episode, I guess, <laughs> while because I'm watching the episode every time there's a new trick by a uh, gentleman ghost. I'm sitting here thinking, like, well, I mean, what are they going to let him do? I-, I guess I was sitting there trying to decide if this was real at the same time that I suppose in, in the episode in that world, Bruce was, too. Yeah. I'm like over here going. We went on this journey together, you know? The whole time, well, are they going to do holograms? Yeah. Are they going to yeah. do holograms in this? Yeah, kind this? of a light show situation. <laughs> like 1940s. This, this guy definitely knows like stage magic. Like we're, I, Yeah. I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm going through the catalog of magic tricks that I, that I know the, the back canon of a little bit and be like, well, I mean, I guess they could be trying to. It's definitely going to be gonna kind gonna of a do, stage situation, you know? Like it's not. Are they going to do Marvelous Mrs. Maisel or they don't explain how the guy does the trick? Yeah. They, yeah. I do love that. Oh yeah, dude! Literally predicted the predicted the future in bubbles. Yeah, like oh my god, I really I want to go back and watch yeah, that whole show. I do too. God, I love that show. It was great. I still uh, show people the uh, the the Zachary Levi uh, tall people speech pretty constantly. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's a good. It one. was a good speech. Yeah, that's a good one. And Mike, does does Harvey die? Does Harvey die at the end of this show? At the end of the series of the season? I, I don't remember. Is Two Face dead? One. I don't think so. I know he was shot. Yeah, I don't think he's dead. But um, Dead to Rights, I, I could not tell you um, where every character is left at the end of this one. I really do think uh, I yes, watched the Yes, it looks last... like he did. He did die? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I, I think I watched the last few of these episodes when I was genuinely, truly sick. It's a bit spotty in that area. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew he got shot, and like he and Barbara were, he was like hobbling around, and Barbara was like kind of carrying him. Mm. Um. Yeah, he did. I, I thought I remembered him dying, but I wasn't sure. Uh, oh, uh, didn't she at the at the end ask him um, something about like why'd you do that? And I don't, I, I don't even actually know. Yeah, he jumped in front of her. Yeah, he was already shot, and then like he jumped in front. He of took her. the he took the blow. I do remember that. Yeah. Now yeah, it's a bit spotty. That makes sense because he was supposed to testify in court, mm-hmm. and we we still need Thorn around. Though he's all like you know kind of got away with it and then a batter ring flies through the damn window and Batman's out there in like TAS style staring at him like I'm coming for you next he is that scene alone um, I was going to ask you if I was just you know over or superimposing for no reason but um, that one he very much mirroring the um, Batman year one imagery on that one right oh I felt like they were mirroring the Batman the animated series like opening credits where he's like standing on the building with the lightning behind the, oh yeah the lightning behind uh, 100% I mean right before I, what I was catching in, with Rupert sitting in that room especially with the bat smashing through the window specifically like I felt like they recreated that scene a little bit because he's sitting in this long empty room facing the, the giant windows which mm-hmm. is, is how I kind of remember that scenery and then yeah bat uh, it's sitting alone contemplating bat flies through the windows and I think we're doing an homage here like, uh, you talking about Bruce sitting there in the bat flying through the window? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean by the mirror on that one. Okay. Is that, I thought they okay. just kind of swapped up the character on me on that one and recreated uh, the I mean, maybe. One. Maybe so. Like, what would have been cool for that to have hit home for me, because I didn't even think about that. I just thought it was like a cool threat. What, what would have been cool is like a flashback of Bruce sitting there trying to figure out how to become bat or what to do and then a batman flying in through the window and then to like do that in like episode one and then like the final episode have bookend it with it bookend it with him doing it to instill fear in rupert thorne yeah um but whatever we 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 end on a really cool like little stinger teasing joker Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll, i'll already say not 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 sure I'm crazy about the Joker voice as we're hearing it, but I'm very, very interested to see what we're gonna do because the closest I've ever gotten to seeing Golden Age Joker as they were as he was presented in the comics was in Gotham. The monotone one? And it Yeah, the the weird, like emotionless monotone man with a ghastly grin. Yeah. Um And hell even that so. you kinda have to pick pieces of of which Jerome, and I'm going to blanketly use the term Jerome, that changed a lot. Oh, it would have been Jer- Jerome. It would have been his brother, exactly. Jeremiah, yeah. who became the actual Joker in that case. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, whoever Cameron, Cameron was playing at that time. Um, I think it was Jeremiah, the twin brother. Yeah. But, <clears throat> sorry, if I recall, though, he didn't he didn't look too wicked then, but he, he 
it, that was about as wicked as he acted and sounded during the entire run in certain ways. It was it was more like bone chilling, but he... he that he, man ran the gamut on Jokers. He did. He did about every interpretation and then kind of mix and match to few is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, you know, for just sheer impressive range on a Joker, I don't, I don't think I've seen him beat, honestly. No, no, it's going to be hard. And not many people had that many opportunities to to do it that uh, widely, but he sure as hell took every opportunity and ran with it, man. Mm-hmm. I have seen him in some other stuff, and apparently that's not an aberration. He's just genuinely really good. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. All right, man. Well, uh, I don't know how much more I have to say about it. It does seem like Batman is uh, okay with at least uh, possibly killing in this universe, and that's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, very golden age. Very golden age. Very, very golden age. I wonder if that'll come up. I'm curious about where uh, everybody winds up. You know, like I'm, I'm digging Montoya. I'm digging Harley. Everybody, like Barbara. Clearly, she's she's getting influenced by Batman in some regard, and she's willing to put her neck on the line, um, even as herself. Yeah, and there's still a lot to expand on. Like you said, there's a bunch of, um, you know, references to Robin. Mm-hmm. We've clearly got you do a lot with that. We've clearly got a Barb's that could, uh, yeah. I mean, plenty of. Uh, Bat family expansion possibilities that would all work here. Or mm-hmm. tease. They could go so many places with it. It can. I mean, if you're going to work in a Joker here, that's that alone is... Uh, I get everyone's instinct. I, and on the So on the one hand, the only thing that I did find a little bit boring is there are certain beats that I've just seen hit before. Like mm. Two-Face to me is not the most compelling way to do it. They did a great job of it here, but that doesn't mean I would have picked that character if you just let me. Um, but I do understand certain kind of tropes even in the dc universe where you just leave joker as the playing card at the end of you know batman begins kind of thing i get it mm-hmm. i get it i get it we all know that's the big swinging dick of this fucking villain universe and you know maybe maybe you play with the other ones first i get it yeah maybe like i wonder how they'll do it like how they'll go about it like if they're like oh well let's see what bane looks like you know you take a 90s villain someone who was just born of the fucking 90s and say like what, what, what does he look like yeah in the 40s yeah. Like, you know, they already did it with Harley Quinn, and I dug the way they did it. I really dug the way they did it, so. I mean, uh, to pick two that I'm looking forward to, you know, goddamn well I'm going to look forward to a Scarecrow in this universe, because I should. I should look forward to that. I think yeah. I think the flavoring he's using, whatever I would call that, you know, general vibe of it is, I, I feel like it would be great in Scarecrow, but also Riddler. Riddler could be fun. I think both of these takes, from what I've seen so far, would are exciting to me. Here's the thing, though. Um, well, that's gone. That, My that brain thought, just like came up with it. That thought, and that hope. Before I could say the dream. it, it went away. <laughs> Where does that dream go? <laughs> oh God, I hate my brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was something about Riddler, but, um, yeah, you mentioned Riddler. I was not thinking of Riddler. Um, one, I, I would love to see, dude, I, they, I feel like they already hinted at, Superman in this universe because they literally had Lois Lane from the Fleischer cartoons as part of the press here. True. They had Jimmy Olsen in the background with the camera. Um, dude, Lois shows up like two or three times. Yeah. So I want to see, like, can we get confirmation that this is in the Fleischer universe? That would be so exciting, dude. If they, if they like came out and like made it known that, by the way, this is in the Fleischer Superman universe, like, oh, Oh shit! So something I um, something I'm used about today. I hadn't talked to you about it, but um, I kind of wouldn't mind a little bit more of that to come back in a way because you know how the the trend right now, of course, is if you need something to be there but a little bit different, you just say it's a multiverse thing, and we all we all can move mm-hmm. on. We got our explanation. Um, but I kind of I kind of wouldn't mind at all a couple of these. Let's go back and just write it in so that it was there the whole time, but I never had to explain it until just now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could, I could stand a couple of those to round out the, the palette, I guess right now. Yeah. So yeah. What what you want to say? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's go back and let's just say like, because my memory of uh, the Fleischer universe is a fair amount of this isn't universe or isn't mentioned like, okay, we'll just go back and write this one as though it was there the whole time. And just at the end, tell me, oh yeah. Or in the middle, tell me, oh yeah, by the way, here's the crossover. Mm Mm-hmm. We just didn't say it before, but put it in the same universe. I, there's a, I, I think I remember some of that storytelling from from a while back. But since multiverse got introduced, I feel like it's just easier to do that instead now. 
Yeah, I mean, you know. As I remind people frequently, the multiverse has been done in comics since 1956. So, yeah. I mean, it was only a matter of time before it made its way to our television screens and more mainstream viewing. Everyone knows what the multiverse is, even if they, they're pissed off by it. Yeah. Um, which some people... It's common parlance at this point. Some people are always, you know, have... Uh, like, my mom hates hates the multiverse. Like, when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, no, that's this a different universe. Like, she's like, so when does Batman the Animated Series happen? At, before or after Batman Returns? And I'm like, oh, it's a different universe. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> there aren't multiple multiple universes. Yeah. I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. In the comics, there are. <laughs> um, so you mean just a different version? Yes, but they call it a multiverse. Yeah. They call it a, yeah, but, uh, yeah. So I would love it. I would hey, what do you mean? How so do I much? combine all this into one solid thought? Oh, you are not ready for a pull list, my friend. Mm-hmm. Um, Three different versions of Batman not even so, talking to each other mm-hmm. in one week. Um, yeah, I'd love to see Fleischer Superman show up. I want that. I would love for that to be canon in the Cape Crusader uh, canon. And uh, I think, I mean, obviously, I want to see their version of Poison Ivy. I think Bane might be an interesting choice. We already saw Floyd Lawton. Did you catch that? Yeah. The dead shot was one of the hired guns. Yeah, yeah, I heard the uh, Lawton. Yeah, Bane was another one that uh, that that passed through that I could mm-hmm. I could dig. I think I'd like to see the show tr- transition into the Silver Age, sort of like a long form um, New Frontier, hmm. like show Batman progressively getting a little bit a bit lighter. Yeah, I mean it's a fun through. concept that you could also do in um, animation a lot better than any of the bullshit if you tried to plan this but yeah give me a series where it actually does just skip 10 years over about five seasons oh that would be so oh my god that's just orgasmic to me but do it like yes. you're saying where like we start out here and then we go 10 years later and then like season four is just frank miller <laughs> t- uh, took yeah. over yeah yeah like th- they would do stuff like that in the animated series where they would be like they would open on something like the uh like the um the groundbreaking at uh Blackgate prison. True. Yeah. And, and then it's just like, you know, uh, Oh, we're doing this for a brighter, safer Gotham or whatever. And then it's just like five years later. And it's just like so fucking True. decrepit and terrible outside. It looks like the, everything looks worse. And it says five years later, a brighter, safer Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> Season two, everything was. worked out. We forgot to tell you about it. Um, yeah, now, dude, a, like, you I, know, a, a good example of this actually is, uh, if anyone's already yelling at me kind of under their breath right now, young, uh, young justice though, does actually a pretty good job of what I just described. Uh, oh, cause they will skip you know, two, three, four years. They will, but that's ultimately what made me stop watching it. I, in a way they I did can see s- it because it's a, it's a lot to sit down and kind of digest, but it, it it was a, a unique experience for sure. Every time you turned on a new season where you're like, oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, I clearly left and some pieces came and went off the same, off the board while I was in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You like have to re-familiarize your, what, yourself, uh, yourself with the show, but it's, I mean, it's different from just re-familiarizing if like, oh, I forgot the show was on the air for five years. Yeah. They, without, with, without fanfare, without explanation they change character designs they bring in characters that we haven't seen before like shit has happened and and you're, but and it's you're canon, sitting it's there not, going it's not just like they don't explain it because it's some production problem it's it is canon in the universe though yeah it but i don't know that that was an interesting take I, but I, I think i would be more interested in seeing it like okay let's exaggerate that to 10 15 year differences yeah like it's just you know we're when you're talking because the young justice very much does it on a universe scale yeah. Where it's like, oh, there's a big fight going down. Oh, here's the current Bat family. And if you're a fan of the comics, you're like, oh, yeah, fucking, I know Cassie. I know Steffi. I know all these people. And then, you know, but if you're just watching the show, you're going, wait, what? And there's all these, all these things that they did within the Young Justice universe in of itself that you wind up going, wait, hold on. What are y'all doing? Because this isn't from the comics. And I don't know what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. So like, it also just takes so long for it to come out. Like you really have, do have to like watch the show over and over and over and over and over again. And I plan to go back and watch it all, but I just, I fell off the last season or two that they did. Cause I was just like, I don't know what we're even doing here. 
I'm on. I can't follow. Yeah, I'm on the last one. Um, not currently. Yeah, I've, I've kind of. <clears throat> I put it down and forgot for a second, so I've still got to go back for the last season. I think I did watch like the first episode of it, and then got distracted. Mm-hmm. As is so often my fate. Yeah. Well, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I want it on some level, but I, you know, as long as it's not like a whole universe, like watching Young Justice felt like looking at the cover of that Alex Ross Crisis on Infinite Earths book, where you're just like, oh my god, I see like just like all the people ever, and I don't know what's happening. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's just it's just uh, madness. Yeah, it's overwhelming as hell. But uh, yeah, I would love for them to jump ahead in time and do some, you know. I feel like they did jump ahead in time on this season, like a few by months, and they didn't tell us <laughs> a few <laughs> times. I feel like they it. did that a few times here, and I was just like, "Wait, when? When did? What? Hmm? Yeah, I mean, for your sake, we have to assume episode one and two is one of those jumps, obviously. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Th- there's nothing technically stopping you from having that piece of headcanon, though. No, there's uh, nothing stopping me. I don't think so. I mean, like I was mentioning too, um, how you know, in a real world, a lot of these injuries would be much more serious. Um, that also doesn't hurt to add a couple months between episodes here for head cannon, just yeah. for, for him being back on his fucking feet after a couple of these beatings. Mm-hmm. Those damn carnies almost killed him. Those damn carnies. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it didn't make sense to, to name this episode Batman Cape Crusader review. Yeah. Cause I would totally just name it those damn carnies. <laughs> it's a, it's a treat for the end. Apparently. <laughs> oh man do you have anything else on this one nah enjoyed it we'll, uh, we'll probably see it what end of 2025 if I had to guess yeah I would guess Maybe. I mean I know they're working on they're working on season 2 so we'll see you might get it. it by then yeah. by then thankfully there will be some other stuff to um, to get in us oh there will be plenty we are we're nearing the time of um, the end of this sort of Snyder uh, and then what, what was the other guy? Uh, Snyder, Hamada, Gun, Limbo area of life where, where almost none of it existed for a moment. Mm, well. Penguin starts tomorrow, yeah. September 19th. Um, we've still got Kite Man to talk about. Mm-hmm. We've still got My Adventures with Superman to get to. Mm-hmm. And uh, Superman Lois starts back October 17th. We've got plenty of things to watch and, and, uh, Peacemaker will become Creature Commandos comes in December. That's the first of the DCU stuff. Yeah. So we we'll have plenty, man. We'll have, we got we're we're about to blossom into a new age of DC. This is truth. This is truth. It has been a long what year and a half as far as that goes. As far as new mm-hmm. as far as new material went. Yeah. But you know, it was always meant to come to an end. Shit was happening. Shit was happening. Shit was happening. Let him cook. Oh we oh yeah, we got Joker. We got Joker Folly Ado oh, coming. Fuck. Forgot about you. In November. Yeah. Help. We long into the year. Help, Jason. Also, like the way the end. What of are we the doing? Year, it's true. The way the end of the year typically works for me is there's September, then there's early October, and then it's February. Because it, the the end, you get into a bunch of holidays, and then you you basically mm-hmm. it's it's like February before I look up. It's and I think I only look up at that point because I'm very cold. Mm-hmm. So we're uh yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting little area coming up. Yeah, I'm excited though. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have fun. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Keep some DC on your screen, y'all.